All right, so this is actually insane, guys. For the first time ever, an AI model might have gone beyond just solving problems and actually proved brand new mathematics. The claim comes from Sebastian Bubeck, one of the most respected researchers in the entire AI field, who's now working at OpenAI. He says, GBT-5 Pro can prove new interesting mathematics, and he has the proof to back it up. The proof to back up the proof. So here's what this actually means, in the simplest terms possible. When AI models learn, they use something called gradient descent. You can think of it like standing on a hill in the fog, trying to get to the bottom. You can't see the whole landscape, so you take little steps downhill, one at a time. That's essentially how the model improves. But here's the catch. If your steps are too tiny, you'll eventually get there, but it takes forever. And if your steps are too big, you might trip and roll off in the wrong direction. So there's this perfect middle ground, what mathematicians call a bound, where the steps are just right. Now, here's the thing. Mathematicians had already figured out the extremes. If your steps are smaller than 1 over L, L being a property called smoothness, you're safe. If your steps are bigger than 1.75 over L, it breaks. But in between those two values, between 1 over L and 1.75 over L, nobody knew for sure. That was the open problem. And this is exactly where GBT-5 Pro comes in. Sebastian Bubeck showed that the model was able to actually prove something new. It pushed the safe boundary further, showing that steps can go all the way up to 1.5 over L without breaking. Now, it didn't fully close the gap. Humans later proved the true limit is 1.75 over L, which is why GBT-5 Pro's proof wasn't published. But the fact that it made real progress on an open math problem is huge. It quite literally solved a problem that no human had ever solved. Sure, humans could have solved it, and did end up solving it and actually improving on it. But the point is, the model didn't get its solutions from its training data. It generated a truly novel insight. So yeah, the reasoning capabilities of these models are undeniable. I mean, just last month, we saw OpenAI's internal reasoning model achieve a gold medal at the International Math Olympiad, one of the hardest and most prestigious math competitions in the world. An advanced version of Gemini's Deep Think also achieved the gold medal in this same competition. And at the same time, researchers at METR have been tracking something even crazier. The length of tasks that AI can handle is growing exponentially, maybe even super exponentially, with GBT-5 Pro currently in the lead. In other words, models aren't just solving quick problems. They're sticking with harder, longer challenges without losing track. That kind of persistence and long-term coherence is exactly what you need for real scientific discovery, or coming up with new math proofs. And all of this lines up with what OpenAI themselves have been saying. In a recent interview, Greg Brockman, the president of OpenAI, was asked what makes GBT-5 different from the models that came before it. And his answer could not fit better with what we're talking about. That GBT-5 isn't just a little more capable, it's a leap especially in the hardest domains like science and mathematics. Take a look. I think it's smart. I think that the intelligence of these models is starting to be just almost undescribable, right? It's like there's still limitations. There's still ways in which they, they fail. But it really is the case that for extremely hard domains, like look at the IMO results, right? So you can take a model that's been trained on this reasoning paradigm and it's able to write proofs that is at the level of the best humans, right? And it's like, in this specific domain, there's limitations, et cetera, et cetera. We haven't proven like an unproven theorem, any of that stuff, but but it's real. It's like, it's undeniable at this point that these models are able to perform great intellectual feats. And I think that's new, right? GPT-4, I think, was like much more, it was kind of capable and commercially useful across a wide range of applications. But the ideas that it produced were not very deep, right? The problems it would solve, it was not very reliable at. And I remember for GPT-3 actually trying to teach it how to do even basic stuff, right? That like, we kind of realized, hey, you could do this few shot prompting. So you kind of showed a few examples of something and then I'll basically kind of do that task. And so I was like, okay, can I just teach this thing to sort a list? And I gave it like seven numbers to sort. It didn't sort it. I was like, okay. Then I tried to write a whole script of like, I'm a teacher teaching you how to sort numbers. Here's an example of sorting two numbers and then three numbers and whatever. And I'd be like, okay, now here's five numbers and total flop. If you ask GPT-5 that, and I've not even tried, by the way, asking GPT-5 to sort a list of five 
you know, arbitrary numbers, but I am like certain it will do a perfect job of it out of the box. No problem. By the way, it does have access to Python tool as well. So oh, you know, say, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but the point is that the intellectual leaps that these models are capable of assisting humans in is something that we're just starting to see. We started to see it with O3. And you can see math, professional mathematicians starting to kick the tires on GPT-5. Uh, we've seen physicists starting to kick the tires on GPT-5 and say that, like, hey, this thing was able to get, this model was able to rederive an insight that took me many months worth of research to produce. And that's the kind of thing where it's like, you realize this will speed you up so fast, right? I remember doing my own math research back in high school and at the beginning of college. And I'd spend just like so long just trying to manipulate these objects in my head and think about connections between things. And if I had a partner that I could actually talk to about this, who would actually spend the time to deeply understand what I'm thinking about and produce new insights off of, off of what I'm suggesting, that would have just sped me up so much. It would have been so much more fun, right? Because you don't just like kind of get caught in this loop of just sort of thinking about it off on your own and thinking, you're like, wait, I already thought this thought, you know, two weeks ago. And so I think that there's just something new about pushing forward the intellectual frontier together as a partner with GPT-5. So you can see it's not just hype. OpenAI's own president is saying the same thing. GPT-5 is crossing into domains where the problems are so tough only the best human minds could handle them, and it's actually starting to hold its own. At this point, again, it's undeniable. GPT-5 Pro is showing signs of real reasoning, coming up with novel insights and doing work that once took humans months to do. And as these systems keep scaling, more compute, longer task horizons, deeper reasoning, we're going to see them step further into domains that used to be reserved for the very best human experts. We're talking math, science, engineering, real discovery work. And the question is no longer if they'll get there, it's how fast and what that means for us once they do. So yeah, this is no longer about chatbots or homework helpers or even personal assistance. It's about AI starting to genuinely push the frontier of knowledge in the domains that actually matter. If you want to stay on top of where this is all heading, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Drop a like if you enjoyed this video, and as always, I'll be catching you guys in the next one.